Hello, you're here. Thank you. I really appreciate it so much because today, if you stick around, you're gonna watch me repot the most expensive orchid that I have in my collection. Size isn't everything. She was pricey. And this is my Dendrobium speciosum Maitsuro. And then some of the Chinese or Mandarin behind it from Orchid Garden in Poland. Very pricey, very gated, never bloomed for me, but I grow it for the foliage and how cute the little growths are when they come out. This year, this growth here did not come out with a pink hue to it like they usually did, but it's, yeah, it's the first time I got a bifoliate growth. So I wonder what this one is going to do. I was actually saying, sorry for that jiggle. I was actually saying in one of my tour videos, I believe on the east side, I normally get two growths out of my Maitsuru in one growing season. So I was very surprised. I only had this growth to show for and believed, okay, well, it's got two leaves. Maybe that's the reason. Uh, the growing season is almost over but it's giving me another one in there. So maybe now it's acclimated to my environment. Maybe that's what it needed. So what I'm gonna do very carefully, it is in a semi-hydro setup. Careful with the leaves, Nina. It is in a semi-hydro setup. I want to keep it that way, but I want to give it a nice, pretty square pot. And, and I'm thinking I'm going to use Akadama as my wicking material in between. I've strained the Akadama because I don't like how dusty it is. So I took it dry. This has been washed already through the strainer. It's dried and then it's still super dusty. I would say 10 times worse than Ceramis. So any complaints about Ceramis, do not do Akadama if you don't like the dusty nature of Ceramis. Anyway, then I put it through my sieve and kept patting it like you would flour to get all the other little dust off because I much as I want some wicking for this my tsuru I do not want dust collecting in my reservoir new growth is there let's tip let's see what comes out well so far, so good, resistance-wise. <laughs> there we go. Hey, looks decent, yuck, ew, ew, okay. Yep, good thing we're doing it. Apologies, Maitsuru, I do apologize. Let's get rid of some moss while we're at it. And it was just straight lecker and did fabulously, as you can see. So we're going to keep it that way. I just want to see what is going on over here. What is in here? Any gunk that I can remove? Is that, oh, that's all okay. Yeah, this one is the most expensive orchid in my collection, but I had to. Ah, uh, see what I mean about the pink of the growth when it's immature like that? And usually it gets much more pronounced. In the beginning, I thought it was because it was too much light on the growth, so I moved it away from my blurple lights in the dining area where when I received it, I had it under the blurple lights. But it turns out, no matter where you put it, this growths come out pink. And I think it's just the cutest thing ever. Okay, I could be fiddling for a while, I guess, with sheaths and things. But I think that we are actually quite okay. There's not much going on here that I need to address. Isn't that awesome? Mm. Orchids, orchids. 
I tell you. I would like to get some of this off just in case it could perpetuate a problem. So thank you for being here, for your support and all the lovely, the lovely, lovely comments I get from you. Because it is growing in this direction, I got the orchid with these little leads in the back here. It was very small and all these others are now my new growths. So the little ones are in the back. My drainage holes are over there. I've got an eye on all my roots, so that's okay. I don't have to worry about putting my tag in straight away. What I do want to do is, seeing as it is a bigger pot now and it is used to being confined in a very water retentive space, I am going to put all the akadama in the bottom, water it in a little bit. So I'm treating akadama like I would ceramis. And I hope that that is the same as, it has the same qualities as ceramis because then I don't have to keep waiting to get a shipment from Germany and all the temptations that comes with doing that. The roots on the Maitsuru, they feel quite firm actually, but firm doesn't mean that they won't snap. Sometimes the roots feel like, or well, orchids feel like sprouts, very, very brittle. But these feel quite firm, and I like—I kind of like that. Let me get in there a little bit more. Take my time on this one. He, she was costly. You see, this wouldn't happen, just as an example, this is Akadama, this would not happen with ceramics. When you touch it and it falls apart like that, that wouldn't happen. And yet, apparently, in the bonsai world, they reuse akadama. And I'm like, how do they do that if it keeps falling apart like that? That's better. There we go. Watered in. We'll fill up in the front to position the orchid in place so that she doesn't wobble and scoot her way away from how I want her to grow. Yeah, Akadama gets like, like a muddy clay texture to it. It's not, it has the same function I feel as Ceramis, but it's not, it's not as clean of a material. So I would much prefer to have Ceramis, but if this works, then forget that, unless I do a big bulk order again one day. Now, how do I take care that this little gorgeousness doesn't collapse while I shake? So my Matsuru lives, as, you, as I mentioned earlier, on the east side. Lots of bright light, even though it's on the lower shelf. And because I have not had um, roots of this magnitude that I was aware of before, now I know I'm not cautious on the watering. I'm not cautious on the fertilizing. It gets the same treatment for the time being as everything else in my collection. But when it is not growing a new growth, I don't water it with fertilized water. That's the only difference. Sometimes it will get some water with seaweed. Sometimes it'll just get plain RO water. But I never fertilize when it's not doing any growing. Now it is an active growth. I can fertilize again. And it will get like all the others, 300 ppm. For the time being, I am using MSU fertilizer. 
doesn't mean that that's the only one there is. I would like to try a brain mix and I will switch when I've run out of my MSU fertilizer. But um, always 300 ppm and for no other reason except that I have all my others getting 300 ppm. All my other orchids in my collection get 300 ppm. So that's why this one does as well. Now what I'm just really looking out for here is to make sure that I have the roots that were covered totally covered. And that's why I'm picking out small pieces of leka in order for it to settle in and amongst the roots much better than leaving such big air gaps. Selective leckering. The temperatures I have are super hot in the summer, up to 40 degrees Celsius. The um, night temperatures in the winter can go down to five outdoors. I have not had the courage to leave it outside at this stage, and I probably won't this year either going to come inside and get plenty of light under the blurple lights. So just making sure that all the roots, see those roots there? They were nicely in the pot at the beginning and I want them to be covered as they were before. That's what I'm faffing around with at this point in time. Making sure that the roots have the same surrounding as they had when they were in the other hub it's not it wasn't exactly a pot but what I've also noticed about the Matsuro if you have this orchid let me know if if you see it the same way it starts out the new growths are variegated and then they change to green solid green so this one, once upon a time, had a variegation. And now that it's matured or old or, you know, within a year or so, when the next new growth start, it turns a solid green. So imagine when I got mine, my little pieces in the back here, these little bulbs, and I saw all green. I was very disappointed with Orchid Garden very disappointed and I thought oh okay I didn't say anything because I didn't know the orchid well enough I didn't complain and say hey hello where's my variegation thank goodness I didn't say anything because I've made a right fool of myself and now that I know the orchid that's what it does it has new growth variegated and then the as they mature and get older when the new growths start again that is when it actually, then the variegation disappears. And you can see that quite clearly. Whoops, I've just put the tag there now. Right there. You can see the old variegation and it's starting to go a solid color. So yeah, here we go. My little Maitsuro. I have gems and then I have expensive gems like price tag gems. Sentimental gems, this is the price tag gem of my collection. And as you can see, I can fuss for a while just to make sure those roots in there don't notice any difference except more space, which is a good thing. So just one more thing, as an observation, I am not opposed to algae. I don't use white pots because I don't want to see algae forming in my semi-hydro setup. That's not the reason. I just use it white pots for aesthetical purposes. So if anybody saw, if you remember the roots, when I unpotted it, how gorgeous white and healthy they were, 
and solid and wrapped around the bottom. And you see this? It's a white pot, but it's full of algae and the roots were absolutely fine. Now, is this algae alive? Possibly, because there was no smell when it came out of the pot. No odor whatsoever. But the roots were fine. So for me, white pots are simply aesthetics. So now I'm just going to fill up the reservoir to the top, not as high as the new growth, and let it drain out the sides. And there's one hole, not that it matters, that is causing a little, causing a little bit of a blockage there. And that is the Akadama. Let's just make sure it can drain properly. It'll come back again and again. Let's make sure, just one more time. There we go. I keep shifting it like this. There we go. Now we've got drainage. All right. My Tsuro Agogo. Love this. Let me know if you have it. I don't know many people that have it, so I would appreciate it if, if you have it. What do you do as yours bloom? If so, let's compare notes. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. As always, I really, really appreciate it. I really do. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.